Yes! Richard's gonna live! This is the story of a death row inmate who didn't kill and who refuses to die. I want everybody to know that I'm innocent and contact the governor and stop an innocent man from being executed. Three times during 2015, he came within hours or even minutes of being executed. And each time, he survived. He said, yes, and he pounded on the window. <laughs> he was just so happy. It's also my story of how and why I befriended a man convicted of murder and who asked me to witness his execution. Richard Glossip is the dead man who keeps walking. Here's to you, Ricky. Love you, Ricky. Love you, Love you bud. For me, the story began a year ago. I was looking for an interesting case to illustrate the continuing debate over the death penalty in the United States. I found it in Oklahoma, which executes more people per head of population than any other state. The case involves a murder at this motel on the outskirts of Oklahoma City. In January 1997, the body of a man was found in room 102 of the Down Market Best Budget Inn. Barry Van Trees was the owner of the motel. He'd been beaten to death with a baseball bat. The man who killed him was a 19-year-old handyman who worked there. When Justin Sneed was picked up and questioned by detectives, he confessed to the killing. He initially said that the motive was robbery, but then he changed his story and said that Richard Glossop had paid him to carry out the murder. Glossop was the motel manager. He was in trouble because Sneed told him he'd killed their boss, but Glossop, seen here during his police interrogation, kept quiet about it. That made him an accessory after the fact. But he denied having anything to do with murdering Van Trees for money. I don't want nobody's money, man. I earn my money. I've always earned my money since I was 14 years old. And I'll keep earning my money until my dying day. I don't want to take nothing that don't belong to me. I want what's mine. Well, we don't want to put the wrong person in jail. Thank you. And I don't want you to put me in jail because I am the wrong person. But with Sneed and Glossop in custody, detectives were keen to charge both men with murder. We think uh, we know that this involves more than just you. There's a lot of people, you know, when something like this happens, everybody tries to save themselves. Is it all your idea, the whole thing? No, sir. Sneed agreed to testify against Glossop. In return, he would escape the death penalty and be sent to prison for life. Richard Glossop was also offered a plea deal. If he said that he was guilty of the crime, then he too would simply go to jail and he wouldn't face a death sentence. I could have took the deal. I can't stand there and confess to a crime I didn't commit so you can just shove me in a prison somewhere and say, hey, we're on. But Glossop was convicted and condemned to die. For 18 years, home has been in the city of McAllister, as one of 49 death row inmates at Oklahoma State Penitentiary. Richard Glossop is the only one of those men who didn't actually kill anyone. There was no forensic evidence linking him to the murder of Barry Van Trees. And his conviction relies almost entirely on the word of the man who did kill him. Justin Sneed is now in a medium security jail and sticking to his story. Mr. Glossop, um coerced me and, and pleaded with me for over three months um, and the numerous amounts of money that he was offering me kept changing um, up to a point to, um, to that night. I'm truly sorry for what happened to Barry. I am. But I had nothing to do with it. I truly had nothing to do with it. I would not have hurt Barry in any way, shape or form and I surely wouldn't have had somebody else do it for me. That TV interview had been recorded in November 2014 by Fox 25 in Oklahoma. The prison authorities have banned Glossop from doing any more. He definitely believes in his innocence. I mean, there's no sign that, you know, whether or not, you know, it's true or not. I mean, he's come to the point where he definitely believes it. He's never been in trouble, convicted on the word of one guy, been a model prisoner by all accounts. Kim Van Atta lives in New York City and works in child health care. It's a world away from Oklahoma's death row. But 15 years ago, a friend asked him if he would become a pen pal to a prisoner who shared his taste in music. 
The man is unbelievably decent. I mean, he just really is. There's um, nothing that suggests that he is guilty to me. The, um, I tend to think that simplest is usually the most accurate, and the simple motive here was a robbery gone bad, as the killer said at the beginning. While I was in his apartment, Richard Glossop called. This was to be the first of many conversations with him in the months ahead. If Kim would have been in my life, I definitely would have made it, I wouldn't have made it this far. Three days before his execution date, and anti-death penalty campaigners had come to the Oklahoma State Capitol to lobby the governor. We collected over 30,000 uh, signatures. Okay. Among them, one of America's most famous opponents of capital punishment. I've accompanied six human beings to execution. Richard would be the seventh man that I would be with. Sister Helen Prejean's book about working with death row prisoners had been turned into an Oscar-winning movie. Dead man walking. It's not just to accept the death penalty, comfort him as he dies. It's you got to resist things that are wrong. The governor of Oklahoma has the power to grant a 60-day stay of execution, but Mary Fallon was refusing to intervene and has refused to be interviewed about this case. So on the eve of his execution, family and friends turned up at the jail for what was supposed to be their final visit. <laughs> Among them, a daughter he hadn't seen for 18 years. Here's the deal. Um, she's not going to let more than four people in. But there was still a good chance the execution would be called off. The US Supreme Court had agreed to consider evidence about one of the drugs used in the lethal injection process. My Dazalam is an anesthetic used to sedate the prisoner before two more drugs paralyze and then kill. But critics say it's inadequate. You've got inmates who are conscious. Uh, you've got inmates who are gasping. Um, one of the descriptions uh, was um, that uh, the inmate was flopping around like a fish against the restraints. Uh, that's someone who's clearly experiencing high levels of pain. Midazolam was used because states could no longer get hold of their first choice, pentobarbital. Its manufacturer, the Danish company Lundbeck, stopped supplying it when they discovered it was being used in executions. We have never been uh, providing uh, pentobarbital by purpose for prisons, so of course it was quite a shock. Um, we are a company conducting research to save people lives with uh, severe brain diseases, so uh, this was from our view, the complete opposite. But public opinion in Oklahoma was still in favor of capital punishment, and some of its leaders aren't too fussy about how it's carried out. I support the lethal injection. I support hanging. I support, you know, whatever it takes that the state deems is necessary to affect that death. And if it got to a point where we didn't have the technological advancements to have lethal injections, then I would support hanging or beheading or whatever it would take to make sure that that person in the end, meets his justice. It was a celebration, it was a party, wasn't it? You know? Such a relief. But with the Supreme Court looking at lethal injection, a stay of execution was agreed. The news came through while Glossop's family and friends were with him. Now he's seeing me, we're both proud of each other, he's such a strong man and I'm not gonna get emotional on camera, but I just, I'm, I'm just very, very happy right now. This is a Global tail wave, prepaid call from Richard Glossop, an offender at Oklahoma State Penitentiary. The postponement meant I now had time to set up a prison phone account so he could ring me direct. We talked about his close call with the death chamber. That was an incredible day. Uh, I got to meet Sister Helen uh, Prejean for the first time. And uh, when she walked in the room, it was like, it's hard to explain, but it was like this calm came over me that I've never felt before. We'll hear argument first this morning in case 147955, Glossop versus Gross. Ms. Conrad? Mr. Chief Justice, and may it please the court. Oklahoma the United chooses... States Supreme Court is made up of nine justices, four liberals, four conservatives, and one who's harder to pin a label on. Richard Glossop's lawyers needed to get the backing of five of them. So Richard Glossop's case has made it to the U.S. Supreme Court, whose name is on the document for today listing his case. But the case was nothing to do with his personal guilt 
or innocence. This was all about trying to prove that midazolam, the drug used as an anaesthetic, is not suitable. One of the justices certainly thought so. Suppose that we said, we're going to burn you at the stake, but before we do, we're going to use an anaesthetic of completely unknown properties and unknown effects. Maybe you won't feel it. Maybe you will. We just can't tell. And, and you think that that would be OK. But outside, Oklahoma's attorney general was defending his state's record on how it put prisoners to death. Here in the state of Oklahoma, since the late 1970s, actually was the state that birthed and gave life to the lethal injection process uh, as the most humane way to carry out capital punishment. The verdict was announced three months later. I was reporting in Tunisia when Richard called with his reaction to the news that he'd lost his appeal 5-4. It doesn't matter what method you use to execute somebody, you're still trying to execute an innocent man. Within a few days, a new date was set for his execution. He was now due to die on September the 16th. Two weeks before Richard Glossop was due to be put to death, and I was on my way to see him for the first time. Hours of phone calls are no substitute for meeting with him in person. He's never seen my face. He doesn't know what I look like even. And yet, this is a man who I have developed a relationship with to the point where he is comfortable having me as one of a handful of witnesses on his side to witness his execution. So I feel a sense of responsibility that I really do not just need to get to know him, but he needs to get to know me. I expected him to be depressed, but instead he was laughing and joking and exuberant because his case was at last attracting a lot of publicity. Three, two, one. This was one of the reasons, the partnership of Sister Helen Prejean and Susan Sarandon. Here they are next to each other during a scene from Dead Man Walking. Because of their friendship, the actress had agreed to talk to Sky News about the death penalty and about Richard Glossop. He's a perfect example of what's wrong with the death penalty. And so, of course, I'm hoping that some kind of exposure will give him the opportunity to maybe, you know, get his sentence at least commuted uh, because he's clearly innocent. But it was her comment about Mary Fallon which created headlines in America. The governor of Oklahoma is just a horrible person and, and a woman, so it's even more discouraging. Her newsmaking apology. Where's my camera? I'm wrong to call you a horrible person. I'm sorry. The publicity led to new witnesses coming forward. Glossop's lawyers said they showed Justin Sneed had lied to save his own skin. But among those listening to the news conference was the district attorney, who was angry that the case was now playing out in the media. At the end of the day, what does it matter to the state whether Richard Glossop is executed in two days' time or in 62 days' time? Why don't you ask the Van Trees family about that? The continuous delays, the constant delays. Why don't you talk about that? We work in the rule of law here, okay? And let me tell you what, it, personally, it really wouldn't matter to me if I had that much, that much of a question about Mr. Glossop's guilt. But I do not, sir. And at some point, this process has to stop especially when the defense team is playing games with the process and with you. Giving you evidence of new information. I know a few hours later, the new evidence was handed over to the governor's spokesman, but it was already obvious she'd made up her mind. And unless a court rules to stop the execution or delay it, that the execution will move forward. And the governor and you will rest easy with your decision, yeah? I have looked at the evidence and, and I think Richard Glossop's guilty. These are from January 
till now. Mm -hmm. Well, until about... But thousands of people have written letters or posted messages of support on his website. After he reads them and tries to reply to as many as possible, they're passed on to his family for safekeeping. Does it bring any comfort, seeing all these letters and seeing these people who, who write to him? Yes, it does. It means that we're being heard and people are seeing for themselves that he's innocent. And this is helping him to have his positive outlook every day, knowing that people do care. If the worst comes to the worst and September the 16th comes around and the governor hasn't intervened and no new evidence has emerged, what do you do? What do you do in the day? Just pray. That it's quick and just peaceful. You're going to go to sleep, you're going to start snoring, and then you're going to pass away quietly. And That's what Randall Workman would tell those about to die. As a former warden at Oklahoma State Penitentiary, he's overseen 32 executions. I can't remember the number of times that I've seen victims' families that was hostile about that. I didn't get what I wanted from it. I didn't see what I wanted to see. I didn't, I didn't get satisfaction. All they did is went to sleep. They wanted to see some pain. Or... They did. Were you never worried that mistakes could be made and that an innocent man was being executed? I hear the stories and I see the shows where the DNA uh, has proven that a person was wrongfully committed. Can I say it's possible? Yes. Yes, I can say that it's possible. Do I personally feel like that I've executed somebody that is innocent? I'd say it's not for me to say. The courts have decided. Another rally by Glossop supporters and anti-death penalty campaigners did nothing to change the governor's mind. On the eve of his scheduled execution, Mary Fallon rejected calls for her to intervene. Hey Richard, how are you? I didn't know whether this would be the last time I spoke to Richard. I was a reporter struggling with the concept of impartiality. I've met him and I believe his story. I don't think there's enough evidence to prove he is guilty of murder and certainly not enough to justify executing him. Eleven thirty was when I and the other witnesses had to report to the prison gates. The execution was due to happen at three. One of the officials who checked my ID told me, this is a horrible event, but we're going to make it as pleasant as possible. He promised coffee and cookies. But 30 minutes later, we were back outside. The appeal court had intervened. The execution was delayed for two weeks while judges looked at the new evidence. Richard was there and we said, there's been a stay, and he became ecstatic. He, was, he said, yes, and he pounded on the window. <laughs> he was just so happy. It definitely made my day. <laughs> Had you given up hope, or did you still think that there was a chance? You know, you should know me by now. I never, ever give up hope. I've been here before. Amidst the celebrations, expectations were rising for something more than simply a temporary postponement. I don't think I'm going to have to come back, except for his exoneration, because I think that's where we're headed. In a basement below the appeal court is the archive department where criminal case files are stored. Transcripts of witnesses, testimony of experts and photos of the crime scene. But what convicted Richard Glossop was the testimony of Justin Sneed. Glossop's lawyers have pointed to inconsistencies in Sneed's version. Two of the appeal court judges agreed that the evidence in the case was deeply flawed and questionable. But they were outvoted three to two. Two days before the scheduled execution, his appeal was rejected. The following day, I spoke to Richard just as he was being served his final meal for the third time in nine months. I got the same thing except I got a domino piece instead of a piece of a piece of the <laughs> The next morning, we were back at the prison. Once again, he was due to die at 3 p.m. As the minutes ticked away, what seemed like his last hope disappeared. They're just gonna kill him because that's what they want. Word reached his family and supporters that the U.S. Supreme Court had rejected a final appeal. 
everyone knows, the world knows that, that Richard Glossop is innocent. And I think that that's, I think that's a pretty big deal. At three o'clock, I was inside the prison, but still waiting to be taken into the death chamber. There was no explanation for the delay. Nobody was telling Richard Glossop anything either. For two hours or more, I sat and paced the floor and my boxers um, wrapped in a sheet freezing my behind off in that cell, trying to get answers from people that wouldn't give me any answers. I think that was just as much torture as waiting for them to kill an innocent person. But outside, news was spreading quickly. The execution had been called off because of an astonishing blunder. Oh, my God. It's a stay for, for some lethal injection issue, something about obtaining another drug to do the execution. The anonymous company which supplies the lethal injection had sent potassium acetate rather than potassium chloride. I just couldn't take my eyes off the clock, and between quarter past two and ten to three, um, I was feeling just sick at the idea that we were just about to be taken to watch a man die. This had become such a high-profile case that the authorities did not dare proceed. Reporters crowded round to hear from the man who should have been dead by now. This is crazy. Yes, it is, Richard. I can deal with a lot of stuff. But I'm telling you, that was rough in there. <laughs> 24 hours after trying to kill him, the prison staff now had a different mission. They're trying to keep him alive. Very bad, Richard. She goes, um, I can see all the bones in your neck. And she goes, I can see the bones sticking out through your shirt. And um, she goes, you look very sick. The case has also prolonged the agony of the family of the murder victim, Barry Van Tries. You want it to be over with. You want this part to be finished. You want to be able to take a breath and to carry on knowing that justice has been served. An inquiry into the mix-up between potassium acetate and potassium chloride means all executions in Oklahoma are now on hold for at least six months. The prison admitted the wrong drug had been used to kill another inmate last January, but his case didn't attract as much publicity as Richard Glossop. Soon after that revelation, the prison warden Anita Trammell left her post and took early retirement. Then a few weeks later, Robert Patton, the head of the entire Oklahoma prison system, also decided to quit his job. This extraordinary case has provided fresh ammunition for those fighting to abolish the death penalty. Many people believe it's only a matter of time before the balance of opinion at the Supreme Court tilts in favour of abolition. We don't yet know whether Richard Glossop will live to see that day. His execution may be on hold, but the state of Oklahoma still wants to kill him. I just want to thank everybody for everything they're doing. It's made a tremendous difference in my life, and um, I just owe you all a great, great deal of gratitude.